you may know that one of capacity's three core pillars is that everything you do is connected to time. And from our side, that means we need to make interacting with dates and time as enjoyable, as intuitive and as useful as possible. So we have been working on a few improvements to this recently, one of which is the new and improved date picker, which you are looking at right now. We've given this a lot of visual improvements, as you can see, but we've also added in a few new features and I'm going to walk you through that today. So first things first, we can see that it has a visual improvement. It looks a bit newer, a bit fresher, and we have made it easier for you to scroll forwards and backwards through time to find the date that you need. You can do this with these drop down menus, with these arrows here, and you can simply choose the date that you want. However, Sometimes it would be easier literally just to type what you want, and now you can do that. For example, 1st of January 2020, you could write tomorrow, you could write next Thursday at 4pm, and it will recognise what you have written and turn that into a date. This is natural language and it is really useful and it's how you can make interacting with the date picker feel intuitive to you because it listens to what you're saying. This is also a good opportunity to show you that we have lifted the pre-1800 sort of limit. You can choose dates before 1800 um, until recently, but now you can. And of course you can search for the dates in here, or you can just type them in as I showed there. So that's one giant improvement to start off. You can see that we also have a new panel that comes up on the right hand side of this date picker. And the first section is suggestions. So these are suggestions for a date and clicking on them will take you to the relevant date relative to today. And once you've done that, if you have the time option enabled, it will then switch and suggest some times that you might want. So you can pick now or before, it's up to you. And these kind of change depending on what you're doing. So keep an eye on those as they might be super helpful for you. Beneath that, we have the option to toggle on all day. And what that means is you don't need a time. So for example, if I finish a book, I don't think it's particularly important for me to know when I finish that book precisely in the day. So I would toggle on this all day button and just stick with the date. You can toggle all day, therefore the ability to add times on and off just by using command D as well as this toggle. And you can see that shortcut pops up there. Similarly, we have another shortcut for range. And with this date picker update comes date ranges, which have been a hugely requested feature. And now they're here. So if I toggle that on, I get a separate date picker and that's where I can choose the end date. So I can say something's happening from the 2nd to the 3rd of September, or I could make it a much smaller date range. It's completely up to you. So command R will toggle that date range on and off as well. So the two shortcuts that I think would be really useful is command D for the time and command R for the range. We have snuck in, by the way, a lot more shortcuts as well. Um, so if you pop to this shortcut button in the app and scroll right down to the bottom, you can see all the different options there. I'll also point out that if you're working with a date range and you just want to update the end date, hold down shift as you click on the end date and that will update only the end date, whereas just clicking updates the start date. So that's everything that's kind of in the visual date picker, that new experience that we've bought. But there is something else I want to point out. So let me just get rid of this date range and add in the date I finished the book. I'm then going to click on the six dots beside my property and open up the property settings. If you don't get to it through that method, if you open up your object settings and you get to the property section and click on your date time property there, we have added some more settings. So you can choose again how it makes sense for you to work with dates and times for each specific property. So for example, I don't think it's important that my book object type has the specific time I finished the book. I also don't think it needs to have a time range. 
so I can disallow those things and then that option doesn't come up and I get a cleaner interface to work with the dates in the way that works for this object type. However, perhaps in a meeting, it's actually more useful to know what time I went so I can require it and I don't need a date range because that will have only happened once. And that means that I can enter the time in here. And there we go. So check out those settings for any date to time property and you can toggle on essentially what you want to see and what you don't want to see so that you have a cleaner experience in working with dates and time for each object type. So it's a more customizable approach. So that's everything to do with the latest date picker update. If you have any questions about this, please let us know in the comments below.